can you exercise in the luteal phase in the two week wait and what you should do. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. Today I wanna to talk more about movement, building muscle exercise and the luteal phase especially if you are trying to get pregnant. Before we dive into this episode, just huge thanks for you to all be here. I love seeing this channel growing and it's all because of you. So please subscribe, comment. This video is actually inspired by a comment that one of you asked. So ask your comments below. We are pulling content directly from them. Also, would love it if you would consider ordering my book, The Fertility Formula. You can order it anywhere books are sold, but if you go to nataliecrawfordmd.com slash book, you can learn more about the pre-order bonuses that we have. The book comes out April 14th, but before then, there are some special bonuses, including modules, videos, calls, handouts that you can get only if you pre-order. All right, well, let's dive in. So here's a question that one of you asked. Thank you very much for this video. What about movement during the two week wait? What do you recommend to a gym girl? Now, this is a great question and there's so much misinformation. And honestly, if I'm going to be serious about it, I think fertility doctors have done a little bit of a disservice here by giving a blanket recommendation of do not work out. And maybe this is just in certain treatment cycles or in certain situations, but we don't give patients enough autonomy to understand not all exercise is created equal. The benefit of exercise and why if you're trying to get pregnant, taking two weeks off of not exercising every single month is just not good for you. But also that exercise is a great form of stress relief in addition to the fact that there is no evidence that you should avoid exercising in the two-week wait. Let's just think about really quickly though the difference in the luteal phase and the follicular, why this recommendation might come from, and then what I recommend and what I want you to know. So if we want to go over menstrual cycle, very, very fast. I want you to think about the follicular phase or the first part of the cycle is when an egg is growing. An egg grows inside a follicle. The brain sends out the hormone FSH. FSH gets a follicle to grow. As that follicle grows, it makes estrogen. Estrogen grows the lining. It also makes you feel great. It improves energy. There's estrogen receptors throughout your entire body. So when we start looking at the difference in the follicular and luteal phase, we know that your body does actually respond a little bit differently. This is when you're going to have improved variability in your heart rate in the follicular phase. You are going to have a resting heart rate that is going to be lower. Your core body temperature is going to be lower. Essentially, your recovery is a little bit better as well. So in the follicular phase, the body's in an estrogen dominant environment on purpose. That's not a bad thing. Then when that follicle gets to its fullest, it is going to have its peak estrogen. And this peak estrogen tells the brain, let's send out a surge of LH. And LH is luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone gets the follicle to rupture. The egg is released and then the follicle reforms. Now we are entering into the luteal phase. Fun fact, the egg has to be fertilized within 24 hours if you are going to get pregnant that month. But now that corpus luteum the, made from the prior follicle is going to make progesterone during the luteal phase at the instruction of luteinizing hormone or LH from the brain. So LH is released in pulses. The corpus luteum then responds by making progesterone in pulses. If you get pregnant, HCG from the pregnancy, that's the pregnancy hormone that you can detect on a pregnancy test. HCG is made from the pregnancy and this rescues the corpus luteum and you continue to make progesterone. So a lot of times you can think about the luteal phase being indefinite if you get pregnant. Well, if you're not pregnant, then the corpus luteum can only live for two weeks. It dies, progesterone drops, you get a period and the process starts over again. Well, just the opposite to the follicular phase. Because the luteal phase has progesterone on board, progesterone is the progestational hormone in a woman, this is preparing your body for pregnancy or to gestate a fetus. So this is changing metabolically, physically, how your body is working because it wants to conserve energy and have enough nutrients and calories for that potential pregnancy. This means that as progesterone rises, your core body temperature is going to increase. You are going to see your resting heart rate increase. Heart rate variability decreases. Recovery is reduced. You have a tendency to be more insulin resistant. And these are natural mechanisms to make sure your body has what it needs to support a pregnancy. This doesn't mean you can't work out during this time, but I always say you should understand that your body is going to be wired differently. Now, why do some people say that you shouldn't work out in the luteal phase? 
I think a lot of it comes from these prior fertility treatment guidelines. And maybe if you're going through fertility treatments, I'll touch on that in a minute because your recs may be different. But let's just talk about if you're trying to get pregnant on your own, or even if you're doing ovulation induction medication, you're not doing more advanced fertility treatments. Well, your body is different in these different times of the cycle, but there's no need for you to completely change what you are doing or avoid activity altogether. There is no evidence that exercising in the luteal phase is going to cause a miscarriage. It's going to change the ability for implantation. Across the board, we don't love women who are trying to get pregnant to do a lot of high intensity exercise. In fact, studies showing vigorous activity of 60 minutes or more, so whether it's intense in length or it's just intense in general, can cause a stress response that actually makes it harder to get pregnant. And this is likely just due to some of the calorie deficiencies or the increase in the stress hormones that we see from this. I always say building muscle, using muscle should be welcome, accepted throughout all times of the cycle when you're pregnant, when you're doing fertility treatments. So for all of my patients, I say strength training is really the key of what we want you to do. This is going to mean pick up weights, build muscle three times a week at minimum, follicular phase, luteal phase. Once you are pregnant, you can do all of those things. Now you might notice that a plan that has progressive load every single week might be hard for you. And I see a lot of women get discouraged if we're in the luteal phase, we're in the two week wait, and suddenly we're not performing as well, getting discouraged because we should be increasing based on our plan. Remember, a lot of these plans are based on men. Men have very different hormone patterns. So knowing this information can allow you to say, maybe I add new weights or I go up in reps in my next follicular phase and in the luteal phase, I'm staying where I am, but I'm still using and building that muscle. Also knowing your fatigue, you might get fatigued earlier and listening to your body is going to be key in those moments. I think because we know that very high intensity exercise can be stressful to the body, I like this at minimum when you're trying to get pregnant. It doesn't mean never, but it's not something I want you to do four times a week. I want it to be something that you are really being mindful about when you are doing it. I also think that in the luteal phase specifically, I want you to have good rest intervals. I want you to listen to your body, hydrate enough, get sleep, and know that you need more calories just based on making progesterone is a more calorically dense process than not. So your body has a higher nutrient need in the luteal phase. And so if you are training hard, you're not fueling enough, this is creating a circumstance where your brain is not gonna sense that it has what it needs. And then you can go into hypothalamic dysfunction, luteal phase defect, not making enough progesterone. Remember the fact that a lot of intense runners actually have a luteal phase defect, and this is because of that hypothalamic dysfunction. So if you're trying to get pregnant, still work out. You're a gym girly, go to the gym three times a week. Just be mindful, know how your body works so you can target and change your exercise along with that, and you're going to be the happiest along the way. Now, if you are going through fertility treatments, specifically if we're stimulating the ovaries, this means getting the ovaries to make more than one egg. So now the ovary has a different weight and it actually has a risk of something called ovarian torsion. Ovarian torsion is when the ovary twists on itself and that vascular stalk that roots the ovary in the body actually twists, it constricts the blood flow. And then you're in a circumstance where the ovary is not getting the blood that it needs. When this happens, this could be a surgical emergency. This is hugely problematic. Nobody wants to lose an ovary. So due to the fear of ovarian torsion, if you're going through IVF or if you're in a modified natural embryo transfer, or if you have a lot of follicles developing, we are going to be modifying the activity that you can do. And the way that I describe it to my patients is imagine your ovaries are water balloons and they're sitting in your pelvic brim, the bony part of your pelvis. I need them to stay here. So you can do squats, that's fine. You can walk, they're not going anywhere. But if you run, they're moving. If you're doing downward dog and inversions, they're moving. If you're twisting on your side, they're moving. So I need the ovaries to stay in the pelvis. So you can still absolutely work out. I say strength training, yes, yes, yes. But you might need to be mindful and change what you are going to do so that you don't develop ovarian torsion. Hopefully this video helps you out. Jim Gurley gives you some more knowledge about what you can do, that it's okay to exercise, and maybe some knowledge about your body and how you can shift things so your training program works for you the absolute best. As always, appreciate you being here. Check out the fertility formula, and you can always get more information on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.